Torch News, Extra Time. Dr. Ifiolu Akintunde. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I wondered if you could just tell me, first of all, what made you want to be a Torch trustee? Um, well, I've known Torch for a very long time, actually, from when I was a child in Nigeria as well. So um, it, it was very good when I came to the United Kingdom to find out about Torch. And I visited Torch in the 1990s, then uh, mom and dad Heath were still alive. And I was really, it was for me, it was an interesting thing to actually, uh, Torch was in a place called um, Halatin then. It was um, kind of an, um, one of these sort of big, houses I don't know if it was a country house or something with um it, it was very homely however it was and it was just good to meet them and to hear their vision of when Torch started now I know that that was in the 90s and, and Torch has developed a lot since then um but that impression stayed with me about a couple who um who had a vision to provide material for blind people. And what also stayed with me was that without knowing it, I was one of the blind people in Nigeria, uh, um, far away from their original expectations who benefited from being in Torch. I, I went to a, a, a school for blind people. Um, it was a Catholic school and I don't know, I, I wouldn't even say I was a Christian then, but I still read Torch material and it influenced me. Um, and it influenced my faith and so just to have been um to have known torch and to have really been a beneficiary was one of the great things that as i came into the country and began to see the work of torch i never forgot that and um you know just want to be a part of that really oh that's fantastic so that's like been a lifelong journey it has been, yes. Um, yeah, oh, that's wonderful. Um, so as a trustee, uh, what do you hope to bring to Torch in that role? Um, quite a number of things. I suppose it's interesting that, I don't know if there have been many other um, trustees of African descent um, in Torch, um, but I think that Torch has worked in places like Malawi um, and all over the world. So I suppose one of the things I'd be really interested in is the international work that Torch is doing. Um, but in addition, I've also been involved because um, of, the, of the church and the other organizations I've been in, I've also been involved in, in work like the Cyclos Friendly Church, and I, I know many blind people who um, aren't able to fully access church for reasons of their blindness. So um, those kinds of areas are, are things that I'd like to kind of see really develop um, and just, you know, the links with organizations, I suppose, that Torch hadn't been linked with before, like the organization I was in, the Overseas Fellowship of Nigerian Christians, um, just bringing those kinds of areas in and, you know, building areas that, that I suppose, what's the best way to put it? That. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> new areas, new organizations, new dimensions. Hmm. Mm, fantastic. And um, you mentioned Sight Loss Friendly Church there. Um, am I right in thinking that the church you attend has signed up to Sight Loss Friendly Church? Oh, not only the church. The, the, the church I attend has signed up. The Overseas Fellowship of Nigerian Christians has signed up. Um, and what I'm trying to get them to do is not only that the head office has signed up, but I'm trying to work out how the various branches can also sign up. Um, so I'm talking to the various branch leaders and saying, your branch might need to sign up as well, not just the head office. Well, that's brilliant. So that's, that's already, you're sort of doing the things you're talking about, connecting Torch with other organizations and helping. Yeah. Them. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. Um, I wondered if you could tell me a bit about what, what you think of Sight Loss Friendly Church. Like, why, why do you think it, it's an important initiative? Um, yeah, what's your opinion of it? <laughs> oh, 
that the first thing is um i believe that god is a god god is god of everyone and uh, therefore everyone should be able to um fellowship to hear god to read christian material whatever i, I believe everyone should be able to access um what church offers um so for me that's the that's one of the important reasons why i'm in torch the sight loss friendly church in my own church um i grew into the church i think is the best way mm -hmm. i can describe it when i was growing up in nigeria the churches i attended they didn't know me and they were kind of slightly bigger churches i suppose but here when I joined, I gradually became a part of the church, joined the worship team. Um, I'm on the board of trustees of my church, and I'm also um, on the board of trustees of the Overseas Fellowship of Nigerian Christians. So I'm able to enjoy giving and receiving from church. It, it, it's not just been a one-way thing for me. And so when I, when I find out that a lot of people cannot access church in that way, um, it's something that means for me that those people aren't able to enjoy what I'm enjoying in church. And as I said, back when I was growing up in Nigeria, I was one of those people. Um, and in my church now, even and I, when I say my church this time, I mean the church I attend when I go to Nigeria and I spend like three or four weeks every year in Nigeria. They now know me very well. But as a child, I was my my family was known i was very well known in the sense that people knew that i was the son of this person or i was the brother of this person i was the sister of this person but not um who i was i think the best way to describe it is i once met someone who said oh we go to the same church and this person was talking to me outside of church in a completely different context and the first thing that occurred to me was but i didn't even know and you know you saw me every sunday when i was in church so there, there was that hesitancy there was that kind of you know i'm in church but not in church when i was growing up and that's the kind of thing i like to avoid really oh i see so yeah so the not really feeling a part of it and feeling completely like able to kind of be yourself and be active and participate is that yeah or even the people in church feeling comfortable to be with blind people feeling happy feeling you know feeling that they can communicate with a blind person or they can you know they, that, that the blind person can be a part of their church fellowship and they can fellowship with a blind person. I think when blind people and sighted people are together, I think you have to sometimes, and it's two way, you have to sometimes overcome that initial um, barrier of, of how can I best communicate with this person or how can I best deal with this person's blindness? And actually for blind people, I think they also have to deal with how can I best deal with this person's sightedness. But blind people never want to say that. They think it's all one way. But it's actually two way, I think. Mm. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I like that. And I suppose that's a, there's a wider thought there of everyone has different ways that are the best way for them to communicate. So I suppose it, go, it goes beyond sight loss and, and, you know, into just who someone is and how do they communicate and what's going to reach them. <laughs> It does, yes. And um, you're right, everyone's an individual. But I think churches, because if I, as an individual, go to a church, I enter essentially an institution, mm -hmm. you know, um, I enter a body corporate, a whole group of people. And so it's probably easier for them to reach out to me than for me to reach out to them. And so the whole idea of a cyclist friendly church is about encouraging churches to reach out to the blind person or to the person who has sight loss. And when that is done, then it's probably easier for the person who's experiencing sight loss to reach out to them. Knowing, of course, that some people lose their sight at an older age. Some people, when they lose their sight, they lose 
a lot of the security that they had as sighted people. So there are all those kinds of things that sometimes need to be taken into account when somebody comes into church as somebody who has sight loss comes into church. Mm. Yeah, well, that's, that's a really good way of explaining that. I like that. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask as well, Torch is hoping to welcome more people with sight loss into roles as trustees. Um, I wondered, what would you say to someone who might be hearing this and, and wondering if they could be a trustee? Which, what would you encourage them with? Oh, I'd, I'd encourage them for two reasons. One, because of the amazing work that Torch is doing. Essentially, if you think that this is good work in that we're reaching people um, who are blind or partially sighted with the gospel or assisting them to get involved in church life or providing reading material for them or running things like touch fellowship groups. If you think that's a great thing and two, and quite a number of people who are blind and, and, and partially sighted, as I said, quite a lot of them are very skilled, quite a lot of us, but haven't got ways to channel those skills. So if you have the skill, this is an excellent way to channel those skills in something that's highly rewarding in seeing Torch minister to people who are um, not normally ministered to by the rest of society. Support Torch through prayer, volunteering, giving. Find out how at torchtrust.org.